Hi everybody, so today I'm going to be doing a pretty much how to clip your bird's wings part two. Um, I made a video like this uh, probably like months ago. Actually not months ago, it was probably like a year and a half ago or something or two years. I don't remember, but I have a different bird today. Um, his name is Sonic and he's like a four-year-old parrotlet that likes to pretty much just interrupt everything you're saying and um, just be louder than you so you, you pretty much can't even hear yourself talk. <laughs> so uh, the reason why I'm making this video is because of how many like mixed responses I got from people. <laughs> I really wanted to like do <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't focus when he's on my shoulder. I really wanted to do a video that um, helps people understand the benefits um, to clipping wings and what, why you shouldn't clip your bird's wings if you don't want to. Now, before I get started into this, my previous birds have all had their wings clipped and not clipped. Um, and I've lost birds I've lost birds because they didn't have their wings clipped, so I wanted to give examples um, and kind of give you like information of why you should or should not clip your bird's wings like your lifestyle, because everybody's different. And if your lifestyle allows it, then you can have your bird live happily with long wings. So before I even get into this, you should know Sonic's wings are not clipped. He can fly anywhere all the time and he's been like this for like a really long time so like ever since we've had him we have left his wings like this um and i have a towel on my shoulder so that he doesn't poop on me right yeah so anyways why you should not clip your bird's wings so why you shouldn't clip your bird's wings and yes i will show you how to clip them i'm not going to clip his but i'm going to show you how to do it just for a part two to my wing clipping video that I made a long time ago. People like said that I did it wrong and then some people were like, well, you can do it this way or a different way. And people called me like a horrible person saying that it's like ripping your bird's legs off or ripping my legs off. That's what wing clipping is like. And it's actually not like that at all. And if you were educated on birds, you would actually know that birds have been domesticated for years so their bodies, like some person just wrote recently about how their like lungs and stuff were, are meant for having, being in flight pretty much. They're saying that their lungs and their other organs are meant to be flown around, which that's true, but they're also able to just relax and chill on your shoulder. And every once in a while, even if your bird does have clipped wings, they can still glide or should be able to so they still get a little bit of that exercise they're just in a safer um, environment so sonic's wings are not clipped for multiple reasons number one because he knows our house now and he doesn't bump into anything rarely now that doesn't mean that there's not times where he hasn't done it he has several times bumped into mirrors he's almost gotten up to ceiling fans that's why we turn them off this one up here is on right now and I literally thought that it was off, and then I started this video, and I was like, crap. I never take him in my room, so this is an unfamiliar area. So before this video, it took me about 20 minutes just to get him on my shoulder because he was scared of what I'm... He was scared of my camera, and he was scared of what my camera's sitting on right now, which is a coffee pot because I don't have a tripod. So it's like a coffee maker. <laughs> don't ask. It's just that's how it is. So, but yeah, so... I just want to give information and stuff in, about this because a lot of people like were saying I'm such a horrible human and that I should go die because I clip my bird's wings. Number one, they don't feel it. Number two, birds have been domesticated for years and their bodies have adapted to wing clipping. Like you don't think that his parents' wings weren't clipped. They were probably adapted. A lot, of, actually I say that because a lot of breeder birds are actually free flight because they're not pets. But there are a lot of breeder birds that actually do have wings clipped if they're pets and breeder. 
there's so many birds. These have been bred for years, okay? Like, this breed is a domestic breed. It's no longer a wild freaking bird. Like, I didn't get him from Africa or Australia. Like, I don't even know where he originates. He originates, he's a Pacific parallel. But he originates somewhere in, like, probably Alaska, South America, Africa. I don't even know. So, anyways, that's a different, totally different topic. These birds have been domesticated for so many years. Sorry, I'm just checking to make sure this is filming. And they have adapted to this lifestyle of being clipped and not clipped, okay? They're not a wild bird. He doesn't have any enemies in this house that he needs to fly away from. Birds have wings so that they can fly away from enemies and from uh, dangerous things, like if they need to go higher for shelter. He could never survive in the wild with his wings, like, unclipped. They would have to be not, I mean, he would have to survive only with wings, is what I'm saying. Like, not clipped is what I'm saying. Like, do not clip his wings, obviously, if he was in the wild. Like, that's why they have wings. In captivity, it is okay to keep their wings not clipped or clipped because they domesticated years and years ago, and they're used to it by now. Their bodies are fine. Like, they literally live longer in captivity with wings clipped than they do in the wild. If you look it up, they say that, like, 10 to 15 years in captivity and then, like, five years or whatever in the wild. Have you ever seen that before? It's because they're less likely to get eaten by something or less likely to get into a fight with another bird or less likely for this to happen or storms or natural disasters. I could literally go on and on about this. But anyways, we chose to keep his wings not clipped. So I have it from every side right now. Like I can look at the side of having his wings clipped and saying you should clip your bird's wings or to not clip their wings. I highly recommend that when you first get a bird, you do clip their wings. Because when we first got him, we did clip his wings. And you know why? Because you can build a bond with your bird. When you first get your bird, it's scared and it's going to fly from everything. You're going to be a danger to it because it doesn't know you. Unless it was so, so hand-tamed to the point where it was so used to you, it's still going to fly because every time like it sees a new item or something, most at least, I'm not saying every bird, but most birds will fly away from, like he was just flying from this coffee pot in my camera a few minutes ago. If he's lucky he didn't bump into something because he doesn't know this room very well. Um, so what I'm trying to say pretty much is I do think it's good to leave their wings like normal, natural. I totally agree that it's, it's good for them, but I'm just saying like it is healthy for some birds it's healthier for some birds, and it's not going to do any damage or long-term issue. It's not going to hurt anything in their body. It's not going to hurt their lungs or their digestive system. or any. It's not going to kill them. It's not going to hurt their brain. It's not going to make them depressed. As long as you're taking your bird out every day and you're loving on it for at least like a few hours a day and giving it attention and keeping its cage always in an area where there's tons of traffic and people... And when I say traffic, I mean like people walking and talking and your family. You have to put them in a family setting. They are a flock animal. Just like dogs are a pack animal, birds are flock animals. They need to be with other birds. So as long as his wings are clipped or hers and they're in a public area where they can like hang out and hear noises and be around people, they'll be very, very happy. When we first got him, he was always kept in the living room, so he was always with us where we are watching TV, making breakfast, making dinner, and his wings were clipped for about maybe a whole year that we had him at first to get used to him and to get him used to our family, and it caused us to have a strong bond. So now I can take him out with his wings like this, and yeah, he is a pain in the butt, and he will just fly all over the house like when he, when he feels like it because he knows that he can get away with it. You know, and he knows his areas now, so he'll go from, like, the kitchen counter to his cage to the kitchen counter to his cage to the kitchen counter to his cage, like, over and over and over again, playing a game with you because he, like, wants you to catch him. It's really funny. And all we do is we just, you know, put our hands out and, like, let him come to us. And then we'll get to this point where he comes. But he's, like, he's used to it now. Good boy. So, like, this is a bird that has been trained to be with a person. When you first get a bird, they don't usually do that. Like, even if they're really hand tamed, they have to get used to you and your smell and everything. So I highly recommend that when you do get a bird, you clip its wings for at least the first few months to bond with it. Then I do recommend that you leave them unclipped if they know the whole house. Let them get used to all the windows, all the walls, all the mirrors in your house because Mirrors and windows are like one of the number one deaths for birds. Toilets! Leave all your freaking toilets closed, okay? Sorry, I'm like passionate about this because I just want to make sure 
that if you're going to do something that is kind of irrational for people that are not used to having birds and not used to like ha like understanding them and how they act and how they get spooked by things easily like I want to make sure that your bird if it's going to have its wings unclipped you're going to make sure that you take care of it the way somebody would take care of it if they know how to, how to handle birds you know what I mean like an experienced person so what I really, really recommend is make sure, like, your toilets are, like, your bathroom doors are closed when you're having bird time. Like, when you're spending time with your bird, make sure that certain doors are closed. Make sure that nobody's coming in and out of the house because your bird could fly outside. That happened to my parakeet when I was really young. I've had birds since I was really young. Unclipped and clipped. So, I don't even want to hear anybody saying that I don't know what I'm talking about because I've owned them since I was a little girl. And I'm 23 years old right now. So, I have owned them for over 13 years. Like, it's literally ridiculous how long I've owned them. I'm not saying I'm an expert and I like know everything. I'm just saying that from my experience, this is a safe way if you know what you're doing. And it's not safe if you don't know what you're doing. So make sure that no one's coming in and out. Make sure especially like if you want to take them outside, have a screened in porch. Don't take them out otherwise. Unless you have like a flight suit, you can put flight suits on him. They're too, he's too small. We don't have one that fits him. I'm sure we could find one, but we just don't take him outside at all because he's not the kind of bird that would like return to you. If you have a parrot or a macaw, like a type of big bird, Amazon, um, umbrella cockatoo, like any type of cockatoo, like birds that you bond with and that you can recall train, then you can put them on in a flight suit and take them out and do like flight training with them to come back to you. But that's like a whole different topic and he's not the kind of bird that would actually come back. He would literally just like disappear into the woods. It doesn't matter how bonded you are to this bird, it would be extremely rare if you found a parrotlet that actually like comes back to you. Cause he doesn't even do that rarely like in our house now. So he loves paper towels. So like he doesn't really care about it right now. But he like loves paper towel rolls. I don't know why. It just makes him really happy. He's loved them ever since we got him. You'll find out that like if you have like cer like certain breeds of birds like really like certain items that you have in your house. Um, some birds really like nails. Some birds are really scared of nails. He like sometimes hates my nails and sometimes likes my nails. So yeah. I'm not going to go into dislikes and likes though. But what I was going to say is when you have like items that your bird likes when they're not like when they have like see he like loves these. If you have an item that you know that your bird really likes, you can use it to like manipulate them to fly to you, like to get to bond to them so that they come to you. Because this breed of, you're so gross. He's like throwing up in it because like he's doing his like love romance dance with it. He's weird. Um, you can use it to like bond with them and to get them to come to you. So like if he keeps being a brat and flying back and forth from the counter to the top of his cage, then what we'll do is we'll pull out the paper towels and we'll go like this with him. And he'll usually fly to it. We'll see if he'll fly to it. I don't know if he will. <laughs> I don't even know if you can see. Oh, yeah, you can't see him. Oh, don't throw up on my shirt. He just, like, loves it. <laughs> He's so weird. But anyways, so now I'm going to get into how to... Oops, sorry. I got lipstick on you. That was really gross. I'm sorry. I'm going to show you how to clip his wings. How you how to clip your bird's wings. I just don't want him to fly right now. No fly. Good boy. So I'm going to show you guys real quick. And you have to grab your bird first. Make sure that your bird trusts you. You have to hold them nicely and gently. I always make sure that they can hold on to my fingers. And then I'll hold them like this. So this is his wing. Okay, I usually clip these first, it's okay, these first four, so one, two, three, four, is the ones I usually clip. I will clip them up to about here, so that's about half an inch or so. Um, a lot of people will only clip these ones back here, okay, so that would be all these little tiny ones. Like one, two, the, every bird probably has different amount up to these major flight feathers. And it gives a really pretty display so their wings will still have this long, ah, nice, this long look to them, but they just won't have these extra feathers. These are called the primary feathers. The front ones, the first four, so these ones, 
are the primary feathers and that's usually what stops them from flying because it's their flight feathers or primary and that's the ones I usually clip but it's totally up to you what you want to do and if you're really uncomfortable about it then do some research to make sure that it is the right thing or not the right thing for you okay because every person is different so this is a blood feather it's a feather oops it is a feather that has a dark hue to the tip of it and when it's removed or when it's clipped it bleeds profusely so this is where you would use flour if it's still attached to your bird even if it's not attached to your bird you'll still want to use flour or cornstarch to stop the bleeding there's also different things that you can buy at petco or petsmart that have like help of your bird um, they stop the blood so blood feathers are also called pin feathers and they are new feathers that are still starting to grow so pretty much you don't really want to clip them anyways but that's if you obviously do it on accident um, but they need a large blood supply and will bleed if broken hence the name each blood feather grows from a special area in the skin called a follicle so yeah you just want to be really careful that you don't hit any of those okay and like I said they're like a white feather they're really thick I've seen them on him but I just he did, he's not gonna put up with that they're really thick and they're dark in hue like they look like they have blood in them so you'll notice it so I was gonna show you guys some scissors because usually when I was gonna clip a little bird's wings even a big bird you could clip these with these are like hair cutting scissors and I really like these um, I'll usually use my right hand to clip their feathers with and um, you just want to make sure that you clip the right ones that are not blood feathers um, but I like these little ones because they're sharp and easy to manipulate and they clip really quickly and get the job done you can use bigger feather or er, sorry you can use bigger scissors as well but I just find that these work like really good especially for small birds if this doesn't work for your like bigger birds like a cockatoo or a macaw or whatever then I would try bigger scissors like just regular paper cutting scissors um, so usually that's what helps Sonic's just chilling over here waiting for me to be done right he's like oh my god that camera is scary what do you think you want to say bye say bye yes you say bye it's like why are you touching me lady he is your pretty boy. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, he's got full flight. He can fly. Um, and I we never clip his feathers. Like I said, just take my advice and make sure that you clip your bird's wings if, when you first get them. Because yes, it is safe. And yes, it is actually safer for a new bird to have their wings clipped. But a bird that's used to their environment like him, then I, I really say go for it and let them free range as long as they've been in your house for a while and know you and your family. Have a great night everybody because it's nighttime where I am and I really hope this video helped and just comment below what you'd like. Please be positive. I'm just trying to help. Subscribe for more videos and yeah. Sonic says bye.